What's going on YouTube? Pizzo back with another video. If you haven't heard of me already, I do video game reviews on this channel. So if that's something that you're interested in, please make sure that you subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you know when the next video goes live and leave a like so we can get this video out to the YouTube algorithm. None of that's out the way. Let's go ahead and get started with the Shadow of the Tomb Raider review. The story for Shadow of the Tomb Raider picks up two months after the events of the rise of the Tomb Raider. And it finds Laura and Jonah and Kazumel hot on the trail of Trinity in their next plot. While in Kazumel, they find out that Dr. Dominguez, who's the main villain of the game has been secretly excavating nearby ruins to find an ancient artifact called the Key of Shashel. This is one of two artifacts needed for a ritual that turns the participant into the god Kuku Khan, giving them the ability to stop the apocalypse or destroying the world as they know it. Now of course Laura gets to the artifact first because she's really like that, but as soon as she gets the artifact, she comes face to face with Dominguez himself. Dominguez tells her exactly what she started by taking the artifact from his place. Tsunami is coming this is the first of many catastrophes you're doing for letting Laura learn the hard way to leave stuff alone sometimes. But this is Laura Croft we're talking about, right? She's as hard headed as they come and does the absolute most to escape death until she finds Jonah on the roof helping the survivors of the tsunami. After Jonah calls Laura out for being selfish, he eventually agrees to continue the chase to stop Trinity before the world's cleanse. After the tsunami, Laura and Jonah find a pilot named Miguel to fly them out to Peru. And with a landing about as smooth as a crunch bar, Laura's forced to not only locate Jonah and Miguel, but all her equipment needed for survival as well. Once she finally locates her stuff, finds out Miguel had to split. And links with Jonah again. Hey, do you know what happened to Miguel? They make light work of some ops on their way to a nearby small village called Kuakyaku, where they meet a woman named Abby, a native who ends up not only helping Laura and Jonah in their pursuit of the silver box of Ishel, which is the other artifact needed for the ritual, but also helps herself to a tall glass of Jonah. Really? Yeah. Have you tried any of our local ceviche yet? It's a specialty. <laughs> not unless it grows in the jungle. No. Don't tell me you missed our famous fish trees. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So we finna save the world, or... Anyways, Laura's able to locate a temple with markings indicating the path to a hidden city. And once Laura makes it past that temple, she ends up saving a young boy named Etsley. Not long after that, she finds out this isn't just any young boy. This is the son of the queen of the hidden city, Unuratu. After a short back and forth, they find out that their interests are aligned and they have a common enemy. And Queen Unuratu takes Laura on a tourist trip of the hidden city Paititi. While in Paititi, Queen Unuratu gives context to the ongoing power struggle between the rebellion that's fighting to preserve tradition in the area and a cult led by her brother-in-law, who's not only already being hailed as Kuku Khan, the leader of the cult, but we find out that's Dr. Dominguez behind the mask. I know him. That's Dr. Dominguez. Laura earns the trust of the local rebellion by surviving a journey through the city of the Serpent, which is the home of the Yashil, the guardians of these artifacts, to try to locate the silver box. Now, not only does she barely escape, but she also comes back empty-handed as 400 years prior, an expeditionist by the name of Andreas Lopez moved the box to a different location during the Spanish conquest. Now, from here, things go left, Jonah almost dies, again, and Laura Sharangan gets awakened until she's reunited with Jonah, and they find a new lead in San Juan based on the information at hand. But the same way Dominguez took the key of Shashel, he held Jonah at gunpoint, forcing Laura to come up off the artifact. Only this time to really twist the knife, he throws in the fact that he's the one that put a hit out on her pops. He refused to see the potential for destruction in his work. He had to be stopped. You had him killed. Realizing she's staring into the face of the person responsible for her dad's death, she took it personally. And once she was able to escape with Jonah and head back to Paititi, they formulated a game plan with Esli to prevent Dominguez from ascending to Kuku Khan and destroying the world after. Shadow of the Tomb Raider does a really good job of breaking down Laura as both a person as well as the fabled Tomb Raider. They find a way to make you care about the people that she's lost in her life through flashbacks and shed light on why she is the way that she is. Bats. I'm not afraid of bats. I'm not afraid of you see all her character traits return from Rise of the Tomb Raider, such as her detective skills, her heroic nature, and she's still a beast when it comes to surviving. But the biggest way this game separates itself from Rise of the Tomb Raider is through character moments to help develop her relationships with these people. From Jonah being petty, Jumps into the water before checking to see how deep it is. I know the type. Jonah. To innocent talks with Esli, and emotional moments with Dominguez as well. I have no choice! There's always a choice! 
You combine these moments with the side missions and the NPC characters that you speak to in different areas, and you have a recipe for an immersive experience that makes each place that you visit feel lived in. Working up to never to ask her out. I finally do. And now, who is that guy anyway? That's tough. As a Tomb Raider, Laura seems larger than life. Now sure, she may have the main character plot armor, which is the main reason she's able to stare Jaguars and the Ashiel in the face and live to tell the story. But in the grand scope of things, I think this makes her stand out more as a video game character. And you can tell through some of these side mission interactions with people that they know Laura's name holds weight. I won't tell if you won't tell. I have a secret too. I'm the brave adventurer Lara Croft. Whoa. The developers did a very good job of fully realizing this character, and it makes me interested to see if they continue past these three games or if they'll reboot the next time around. Jonah as a character has done a full 180, going from a character that felt disconnected from Laura in Rise of the Tomb Raider to being his own character with his own motives and goals as well. As I said in the story breakdown, Laura's relationships with the characters around her complement the story, and Jonah is the perfect example of that. Not only is he written better this time around, Pretty nice place. Quiet. But his new character design is refreshing, and edge up or not, he said he got the juice. Have fun. You too. <laughs> More importantly though, Jonah gets to prove himself as an asset, not only by putting in work in the trenches with Laura, but he also helps her when she's stumped on what to do or where to go. Okay. What would I do without you? Some of the character moments between Laura and Jonah help explain their relationship and why Jonah's even helping her in the first place. But even outside his relationship with Laura, Jonah gets to socialize and develop his own relationships with the same characters, which gave him a sense of individuality. From the moment you meet Unaratu, you know she means business. She's probably my second favorite character in the game, not only because of how militant she moves, but she's also a people's queen and a great mother. As soon as she walks you through the hidden city, the people around you speak to her with respect and won't hesitate to question Laura's presence because they don't recognize her. In that respect, she she gets is well deserved because even in the face of opposition, her loyalty remains with the people of Paititi. You can send me back, but I will never betray your people. Her effectiveness as a leader can be seen through her self-restraint and how she commands the rebellion efforts. Plus, you can see why nobody tries to test her gangster. There's even a moment in the story where she folded somebody like a lawn chair and left them laying in their drawers. Now, needless to say, she's a force to be reckoned with and she establishes herself as a valuable ally as well as a worthy adversary. And one can only hope that her warrior spirit and determination pass on to Edsley when it's his turn to leave Paititi. And speaking of leaders, Amaru Dominguez proves himself to be a worthy villain for Laura. Character moments shed light on a bit of his backstory, making him a more complex villain if my brother was alive rest his soul yeah he will think this bickering is a waste of time come home and they make sure to balance out moments where he seems admirable with moments that show how ruthless a dictator he can be i know said he wanted an end to violence he sees it as a means to an end him being responsible for Laura's father's death is a good twist that added to the character motivation for Laura while also showcasing just how long he's been in power. And now that I think about it, after learning that King Sairi, the previous king of Paititi, died and that that was his blood brother, makes me wonder if he had a part to play in that. My late husband Saidi was his brother. They had differences over the future of Paititi. When Saidi died, Amaru devoted himself to the cult. Overall, Dominguez is definitely a few steps up from the villains of the Rise of the Tomb Raider, Constantine, and Anna. This game proves to be a more polished and improved version of itself. A lot of the same game mechanics are implemented such as weapon upgrades, skill upgrades, and most of the traversal items. But there's also enough new content and improvements on gameplay aspects from the previous game to separate Shadow of the Tomb Raider from Rise of the Tomb Raider. Outfits have always given bonuses during gameplay, but Shadow of the Tomb Raider takes it a step further, making the system more modular. You have regular outfits and you also have tops and bottoms that provide different bonuses that you can mix and match. The side mission system is also improved upon. One thing I dislike from the Rise of the Tomb Raider is that the side missions were uninteresting and bland from presentation to execution. This time around you actually have conversations with people and stories developed that give the areas they're found in an extra layer of complexity and personality. Crypts make a return as well and are largely improved upon from Rise of the Tomb Raider. The crypts in this game challenge you to use Laura's traversal kit in interesting ways 
features in different combinations that are not only cool to watch, but give you a sense of accomplishment once you're finally able to get to that reward in the sarcophagus. And of course, challenge tombs remain the highlight of the series, with the focus being less on the puzzle itself, not saying that there's less effort or they're easier this time around, but saying that they've made each of these tombs beautiful or terrifying, depending on where the location of the tomb is. The developers at Eidos managed to not only improve the story and character development, but also introduce creative ways to gameplay aspects from the previous game. You combine that with amazing graphics and an atmosphere in the Peruvian jungle that'll make you feel a range of emotions, and you have a game that really sticks the landing at giving you an experience at the end of this trilogy. All that being said, I'm gonna give this game a 9 out of 10. It's a great game, and it only gets better with the season pass as well. Now that we've gotten through that, you already know what time it is. I want to know you guys' thoughts reactions. Let me know how you feel about what you've seen so far in the comments below. And before I end the video, I just wanted to make sure I apologize. I know I set an expectation to get this video out by the 13th of August, but ended up not happening. I am a one man band, so just kind of bear with me on these videos. But my mindset going into these videos, I just want to make sure that I don't just put out anything. So I made sure I took my time, added a couple things. So let me know what you think of the video in the comments below as well. Again, my name is Pizzo and I'll catch y'all in the next one.